Welcome back. Uh, you heard Akbar, one of uh, the refugees who came and settled down in Australia. And he said he's extremely happy uh, to be living in Australia. And I have got uh, another lady here, Najiba. Uh, Najiba, your full name? Uh, my name is Najiba Vazifados. I'm from Afghanistan. Why did you leave Afghanistan? Um, I think I, like many other refugees that have come to Australia, we have similar reasons. I've left due to war and persecution and my only choice was to escape and come to a safe and secure country like Australia. And um, at the time that I left Afghanistan, I never knew that I would end up in Australia, but then that's where I am now and that's where I'm living peacefully. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you come to Australia? Did you come by boat or did you come by aircraft? Um, I can use a term that's normally used. Um, I, I've came to Australia by boat, so I'm one of those boat people, or queue jumpers as they say. Uh, but um, uh, basically, um, leaving my country was one of the most difficult um, uh, decisions that I and my family were forced to make. But we had no choice, as I mentioned, and we came to Australia by boat. Uh, we came through countries like Pakistan and Indonesia and then um, getting into the boat for 10 uh, dreadful nights and then ending up in uh, Christmas uh, in Curtin detention center for a while and that's how we are at now. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a scary journey the, from your homeland to come to Australia by boat? Of course, um, it, it was <coughs> Excuse a... Excuse me, Alan. <coughs> <coughs> I'll ask that question again. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Najiba, was it uh, a scary journey to come from all the way from Afghanistan to Australia? Mm -hmm. uh, it was a very um, a scary and frightening journey, definitely. Um, uh, there's no doubt about that at all. Uh, coming from a country that was war for many decades and knowing where you, uh, and not knowing where you were going and then suddenly uh, knowing that you're actually going to a country named Australia and you will be traveling in a big Pacific Ocean mm -hmm. uh, in a, in, on a piece of wood not actually a boat on a piece of wood and um, basically your life is limited to that piece of wood and not knowing that you might get drowned at any time. It was scary but at the same time saying that uh, it was also promising mm -hmm. uh, because we had a hope of security at the end of our journey. Mm -hmm. We had a hope for a better life in Australia um, and uh, we knew that if we were going back to our uh, country Afghanistan we would definitely be killed uh, or persecuted by the hands of the Taliban or other enemies. Did you come alone or did you come with your kid and kin? No, I came with my family, so it's my mom, my father, and two. Uh, I have uh, one elder sister and uh, two, uh, basically with three sisters and two brothers. The last uh, family member joined us in Indonesia during our trip, which is my youngest baby brother who was born just before we got on the boat. And uh, all of them are now settled in Australia? Yeah, thankfully, it's been about 12 years that we are settled in Australia. We did go through a very hard um, uh, procedure of becoming uh, a citizen of this country. Uh, we came during John Howard's time, so we were on temporary protection visa. It took us three years to become permanent, and then after being permanent, it took us another three years to become citizenship. But finally, we're here, and we are um, having a good and secure life, as we were always desiring and dreaming for. Mm -hmm. Your English is better than most Australians. Uh, where did you learn, the, learn this English? Uh, well, I, I do come from a, a non. Uh, I do come from a country that I had limited access to education, um, especially for women. We were not allowed to go and have any sort of schooling. So my only form of education was religious studies, and uh, therefore, when we came uh, to Australia and we saw all these beautiful, wonderful opportunities for education, my father emphasised that how important it is to grab every opportunity that comes on our way to um, enhance and grow our education level. Mm -hmm. And um, learning English was part of that. Uh, and in order to become successful and become independent women in Australia, we had to learn how to speak English and as a result we went to school and English language became easier and easier every day. Mm -hmm. Now what, what are you doing now Najiba? Um, I've, I have finished my studies in uh, Bachelor of Medical Science. Um, I'm doing my second degree at UTS. Uh, I'm also working with uh, SSI as a case manager, Settlement Services International, which is basically to help uh, and assist refugees to settle easier. And um, uh, at the same time, I'm also the president of Hazara Women of Australia, which is a um, community organization uh, which helps and assists uh, women who are struggling to um, have a better life in Australia. Mm -hmm. Did the immigration department treat you well when you arrived in Australia and gave you the temporary visa, you said? Mm -hmm. How was the experience? Well, uh, of course, um, the policy back then was different. The migration policy has been changing dramatically every year. Um, we do hear that there's a, every year there's different recommendations going on. But during John Howard's times, the uh, temporary protection visa was introduced um, uh, as a, I don't know, as a stop to boats 
coming to Australia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it did put our life in limbo. We lived in uncertainty and limbo for more than three years. Um, my parents were not allowed to go and have any sort of education in, in Australia. And as a result, they still cannot speak English too well because they were not, they were not allowed to go into services so like AMEP or Navitas English or any migration resources centre to learn English. So it was four years for them living at home in isolation and the trauma was re-emphasised and therefore um, now life has become so much more difficult for them. They could have, it could have been so much more easier mm -hmm. for them to catch up and to integrate into Australian society but because of that temporary protection visa it put all our life uh, in a slower pr uh, process and uh, the trauma became more um, persistent in my parents' minds. Mm. Do you still love your homeland? Of course, I love my homeland and I, uh, I love Afghanistan and I just pray and uh, hope that one day my country is, is in uh, total peace and security so no one is uh, forced to leave or to come to uh, and take a risky journey like coming by boat. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a present government unfortunately, we do have a government that presents uh, in Afghanistan but unfortunately it's just as corrupted as it was before. If peace re returns to Afghanistan, do you want to go back and do some service there? Uh, de yes, definitely. I am not planning to go and live there permanently at all. Mm -hmm. But I do have a lot of goals as my um, as part of Hazara Women that one day I'd like to go back and help and assist those women who are denied education and employment. And uh, and I think if they have some sort of education, they will be successful because the key to success is education. Mm -hmm. And if they receive that education, then most definitely we'll be able to have a better, um, a harmonious environment in our country. Mm. Do you feel sad that uh, the your country, your homeland has been torn apart by war and uh, death yeah, and things like that? Definitely. Like uh, I remember from the day that I was born, I never heard that my country has been in peace. The day that I was born, my country actually actually equaled war and um, terrorist and insecurity. Um, there has been very rare that I hear a good story from my country. Just recently, we've heard a lot of women being raped, a lot of women being beaten to death in front of the government, mm -hmm. in front of 150 men and women has been shot. Mm -hmm. So these are things that I constantly hear in the media and uh, from other people and it just frightens me still that unfortunately we still haven't got that peace that everybody is desiring and wishing for. Mm -hmm. You came uh, very young but yeah. uh, about your parents came and settled down here. Are they happy that they came to a foreign land and they have found a uh, peaceful settlement? Yes, um, uh, settlement has been a big process. Mm. Um, it's not easy. There are different stages with settlement. The first thing for us was to establish safety and um, I, and I think I and my family members and parents did establish that safety and security in Australia. But then the second stage is to overcome the isolation and, ab and being abandoned in Australia. Um, my parents have been uh, feeling homesick mm. and isolated from their relatives and their parents for a long time. But eventually that has been reduced by us children growing up and giving them more love and uh, support to them and uh, one of the biggest factor is that unfortunately us the children have become their mouth and their language because mm. they still cannot speak English they still rely on us and their independence is being limited uh, 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 comparing to how they were living in their own country now there may be other uh, uh, people from your home country Afghanistan who have come and settled down or who are who may be planning to come and settle down also what would be your advice to those people? I will tell them please do not come by boat to Australia because it's the most dreadful and risky and scariest journey uh, that uh, anyone can be forced to make. Um, it's not going to be a, a promising journey. Um, you have a high chance of being dead in the big Pacific Ocean. So I request those to... Uh, I do know that there are limited um, support from the UNHCR and there are limited support from the Australia uh, being, as a, uh, being a signatory under the UN Convention. But I think th at the moment the best procedure is to go through UNHCR or I, I don't know, just to be honest, there's, not, there's no simple solution to it. Mm. You know, just get the message out there and people that are living in Australia uh, to get also the message out to those people who have negative view about refugees maybe. Mm -hmm. Are you grateful to Australia for giving you and your family this life? Definitely. I'm very grateful to what I have been given and uh, to what I will be given in future as well. I live today is because of Australia and um, I'm happy today it's because of Australia I have my parents with me it's because of Australia I'm an educated woman today it's because of Australia and that's the reason that me and my other siblings are working really hard to somehow repay and contribute to this country in a way of telling them thank you very well said thanks very much for talking to us you're welcome thank you Raj thank you you are very very good
Okay. You should join our television program. Uh,